We've done a lot of videos with the Wood Elves lately, but what about our adorable and or terrifying rodent friends, the Skaven? While I expect this Lord pack won't have much, if anything, in the way of a rework for the Skaven, there's a number of things that they could still use at some point in the future, so that's exactly what we're going to focus on today. Big changes CA could make for the Skaven one day, so kicks it back and drinks up some milk and let's skitterly parade into it. Wow. So ordinarily I like to do an order for these videos, but in the Skaven's case, randomness and chaos seems pretty thematic anyway, so we're just going to do it this way. First on this list would be Undercities. The Skaven are currently stuck in this awkward middle ground where they launch with a pretty unlawful setup, where they always look like ruins on the map. Even if we expect Game 3 to have more Horde factions leaving destruction in their wake, this still doesn't help the Skaven. Not only do Norska, the Warriors of Chaos, and the Beastmen leave behind monuments that clearly highlight whether something is a legitimate ruin or a Skaven settlement, but oftentimes just looking at the corruption of the map lets you know in advance if it's a Skaven settlement or a legitimate ruin. Frankly, it doesn't matter much anyway, since trying to settle it will always tell you whether it's uh, Skaven there for sure or not. Then along came the Vampire Coast DLC, and the Skaven finally got the mechanic that suited them perfectly, Undercities. Unfortunately though, CA was now stuck in this awkward middle ground where they had already balanced and designed the Skaven around having proper settlements, rather than Undercities, so the latter mechanic was left mostly unexplored while the former maintained its position as the main Skaven building mechanic. But now that Total War Troy has launched, I'd argue this is no longer necessary. And you see, the hidden settlements in Troy allow you to actually properly recruit units. Imagine the Skaven not actually having any proper above-ground settlements anymore, outside of specific exceptions like Skaven Blight, Mordheim, and Hellpit. Your whole faction could remain hidden for the most part, which would tie in beautifully with how the Skaven operate. Now, one other thing I would change would be what happens after Discovery. Instead of simply paying a fee and erasing the settlement entirely, Discovering an Undercity should allow the option to deploy below ground using the Garrison's troops against the Skaven's Undercity's own Garrison. Either side could also add in reinforcements by simply being close enough to actually reinforce their side as well, and of course the opposite could happen. Have a strong enough Garrison in your Undercity? Use it to wipe out the settlement above it if you like. Alright, so we got our home base sorted, let's uh, deal with how we move away from it next. First things first, I would get rid of the Skaven's ability to ambush on the fly. Now I understand some of you may not like that, but the Skaven certainly don't need any more campaign benefits, and leaving it exclusive to the Beastmen will help the latter feel more special as well. However, I would never dream of simply removing something without improving it in some way, so what I would do is dramatically improve the encamp option of the Skaven. Going to encamp would give your infantry vanguard deployment, with the logic being that they've had enough time to burrow underneath the map before the battle starts. The second thing I would do would be to provide a chance to spontaneously generate an Undercity in the current region, unless it's a Dwarven Hold or currently has another Skaven Undercity within it. This chance would be extremely small, say like 3-5% to or so, but skills and heroes could be used to improve the odds slightly, in addition to the normal method of simply sending an Engineer to forcibly go create an Undercity. This could make the campaign more fun whether or not you're even playing as the Skaven. If a Skaven happens to show up on your front door and starts encamping, you're going to need to push them off, lest you end up with a, squorm, a swarm of Skaven underneath your settlement. But fighting their encamped forces could be surprisingly difficult with them able to deploy all over the map. And as a Skaven player, it gives you more of a decision to make regarding stances, as currently there's not really any reason to run anything other than ambush. And speaking of fighting as the Skaven, let's talk about how they perform in battle. The way that Total Warhammer has them, the Skaven seem to have the best technology out of every race in the game, but this isn't necessarily lore accurate. See, Skaven technology can be incredible when it works, but it working is a big if. In the tabletop and the lore, Skaven technology is infamous for its randomness. Sure, a lightning cannon might snipe out a giant monster from halfway across the map, but it was also equally as likely that it might plink harmlessly off the armor, miss by a considerable margin, or even fail catastrophically and explode, killing its crew. Now, weirdly, CA glossed over all the ways scaling technology can go horribly wrong, and then even weirder, defaulted their ranged weapon to the everything went great results, which tends to make them one of the best ranged factions in the game. Again, this is really unthematic to the Skaven. Going to a ranged base army should be hilariously dangerous for your own troops, and horribly unreliable even when it does work. While the Skaven are already a little overpowered, if these tweaks you know, made them too weak, CA could just simply play around with the misfire percentages until they're back to being competitive again. Okay, you say, but some Skaven technology isn't quite so random, especially the relatively simple technology used by Clan Pestilence and Clan Eshin. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up, other voice in my head, because it leads us into our next point. Skaven clans need a lot more definition. We're going to take a brief lore break here for a moment so you can understand why this particular point's on this list. The Skaven, although theoretically allied under a single Under Empire, 
are still innately selfish, distrustful, and greedy. Powerful tools of war and troops are not something clans share amongst each other. They require resources or favors to acquire. We saw the slightest hint of this with Clan Eshin doing favors, but this concept should be taken and dialed up to 13. Clan Scryer aren't going to create powerful weapons of war for your faction for free. You need to purchase them. Clan Molder isn't just looking for an excuse to give away help at Abominations. They're expensive, rare monsters that they trade for exceedingly high values. Really, any of the specialized creations from the clans should treat, well, their specialized creations as rare assets to acquire, almost akin to Blessed Spawnings. I can basically imagine two methods of handling this. The simpler of the two would basically be to make any clan specific unit extremely expensive to acquire until that clan is confederated or until their home territory is taken over, assuming of course that you yourself are not that clan. And I mean expensive. Getting a warp lightning cannon into any army other than clan scryer should be a huge decision to make. While this is one method of handling it, it's not as fun as the other method I would imagine, which is a bartering system. As I said, the Skaven trade things amongst each other to get what they want. While Clan Molder might simply trade a pack of rat ogres for some gold, what they're far more likely to ask for is slaves, warpstone, and units in return. Such a system could work essentially like the Tomb King's uh, Mortuary Cult, where each unlock of any clan-specific unit could have requirements in it in order to unlock a, sing a single example. You want a rat ogre? Maybe you need to trade 3 food, 10 warp stone, and a squad of Skaven slaves. You want something more extreme though, like a help at Abomination? Well now you're looking at something like 10 food, 30 warp stone, and maybe a couple squads of clan rats. Such a system would slot in really well and provide a really interesting tactical niche in the Vortex campaign, where players would be having to choose between having a potent army or having enough warp stone to win the race to the Vortex. Balancing it out could be a sizable income bonus for your clan's own specialty structures. You're playing as Kranskryer and you got your workshops all up and running? Well, naturally that means you can logically sell off any of your creations to other clans, so those workshops will give you a healthy bonus to income for those buildings as well. And as you get up to higher tier options like tier 4 and 5, the buildings could give a very small bonus to food and warpstone as well, with the implication being that other clans are now buying your really specialized units for expensive fees. But wait, that won't be fair to Clan Rictus and Clan Moore. And to you I say, sure it would. Rictus and Moors are both described as very, very wealthy in comparison to most clans, so they could have better income just by default. Then, if still needed, they could have buildings that play into their strengths. Rictus could have a camp that improves storm vermin in addition to their income bonuses, while Moors could have bonuses to clan rats in addition to their income bonuses. Now, if you're wondering why this even matters at this point, it's because the Skavens still have a lot of interesting clans left. Clan Vulcan are pyromaniac rats who have created custom flame-based weaponry. Clan Scurvy are literal Skaven pirates. Clan Scruton are the secret warriors of the Gracieers. Clan Mordkin are death-obsessed psychopaths with particularly substandard units. Clan Ferric use dwarven arms and armors, and sometimes even the dwarves themselves. Clan Ectric are electri electrically obsessed and even have successfully created Skaven cyborgs before. My point here isn't that we should expect all these clans to be fleshed out or anything. My point is that the Skaven core roster is already best served as a base. So the extra additions that we could get from all the later DLCs could become more specialized variants of it. This not only improves replayability for them, but also serves to limit the bloat from all those additional clans down the line. Our last additional feature is also related to Skaven lore, this being the Council of Thirteen. When I say the Skaven are theoretically led by an Under Empire, these are the rats that lead the entirety of Skavendom. While your first inclination might be a public office mechanic like the Empire, it'll need to be tweaked for our uses. See, in Skaven society, the council always numbers 13 members, with the 13th seat itself left empty for the Horned Rat, whose vote is instead handled by Seer Lord Critislik. Any decisions that affect the entirety of the Skaven species are handled by each member voting. Now, ordinarily, each clan holds only a single seat, at least until the end times hit and then everything goes to hell in a handbasket. The way such a mechanic could work could essentially by, be by combining the uh, infamy mechanic of the Vampirates along with the public office system of the Empire. As you advance, you can challenge any lord of equal or lesser amount to the infamy, or whatever they call it, as you, which sets your faction and theirs to war with each other. If you succeed in wiping them out, or if they die through other means, you inherit their seat on the council. Each seat occupied could provide a discount to troops and upkeep. Eventually, working your way up to max level would add Screech Vermin King to your legendary lord pool as well. And any lord you had sitting on the council would have a bonus to their particular army's leadership as well. This would give the Skaven a lot more tools to play around with, and in a fairly lore accurate way. And if CA really wanted to go nuts, they could even pluck the voting mechanic from Three Kingdoms and have the council vote on things. Obviously the more seats you held, the more votes you could cast. 
Anyway, those are my five additions to flesh out the Skaven. Did I miss anything? Was there something that you really disliked or disagreed with? Let me know down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.